discussion question up there on the board. Discuss till I get back. Well, I'm back. What steps do you think you will need to take to allow editing and deletion from a grid view? And then part two of the question is what about a detail view? So what steps do you think we'll need to take? Yes? Is that something that you can do from the database? Like we're just write a delete and update query? Okay. Yes, yeah, so you can write a delete and update query. Where are you going to put that delete and update query? I thought maybe you could just do it in access, but maybe you can't. Uh, Possibly, but that, that's not how we've done anything so far, right? Where have we written our select and insert query? Yes? SQL data source? The SQL data source, right. So we'll write the, the instruction to delete and the instruction to update in the SQL data source. So that's one of the things that we need to do. Um, a tip for this is to think back of what we did when we, when we wanted to insert from a details view. What did we do when we wanted to insert from a details view? Well, we wrote an insert statement in the SQL data source. All right? So now we're going to have to write an update and delete statement in the SQL data source. So number one is we need to update the SQL data source. What's number two? There's three steps. There's three steps that I'm listing. I guess it would depend on how you broke it down, but I'm thinking of three things you have to do. What's the second thing you have to do? We've updated the SQL data source. When we've updated the SQL data source, were we able to insert right away? Oh, you have to bind it to uh, yeah. Right. You have to bind it to the either grid view or detail view. What other changes do we have to make to the grid view or detail view? Make it so that you can insert. Right. We have to edit. We have to allow. This is assuming we already have the grid view. All right, so it would update the SQL data source, would update the grid view or detail view to allow edit and deleting. And the last one I'll give to you, because you might not think of this one, is number three is we're going to make template columns for anything uh, not getting default behavior. So if we needed a, um, if we needed a, um, what am I thinking of? If we needed a, a validation, right? We'd have to update and make it a template column and put the validator in. So this is pretty much identical to when we did an insert, right? Because when we did an insert, we updated the SQL data source to include an insert statement. We updated the grid view and detail. Uh, well, we didn't have a grid view, but we updated the detail view to allow inserting. And then finally, we made template columns for uh, things that not gain the default behavior. And I guess sort of 3A, 3B here is we wrote some code. Similarly, for things that did not allow the default behavior. Um, this is a case of, it's always good if you can like look at something you've done before and sort of apply it to a new situation. So we haven't gone over details, uh, uh, editing uh, a detail view or a grid view yet. And we haven't gone over deletion. But we have gone over insert. And really it's essentially the same thing. All right. The other thing to note is with just a few little minor differences, 
Uh, a detail view and a grid view um, work really pretty much the exact same way, right? Um, and if you think about it, any of you, I don't, I don't know exactly um, what they teach in the intro to C Sharp course. Do they teach about objects and inheritance in there? Okay, I'm getting like, I'm getting like maybe a little bit. I would think in the, in the advanced C Sharp class they would talk about this. Um, this is an object-oriented concept of inheritance. In other words, what you can do with these classes and what are details views, grid views, all these things, these components that I've been calling them, they're actually classes. And classes can inherit from other classes. What do I mean by inherit? I mean they share characteristics and behaviors. So I don't know exactly what the .NET framework looks like, but I'm sure the detail view and the grid view have a common ancestor because they share a lot of the same behavior, really. There's just a few things that are a little different about them, mainly the way that it looks, and also that you can't do an insert on a grid view. Never been able to figure that one out. That one doesn't seem to be that hard of a problem. In fact, I've seen people that have customized grid views to allow insertion, but by default, um, you're not allowed to, to do an insert. Um, and again, that's an important lesson to remember, that these components, they um, are great because they do a lot of the work for you, but you should never think that you are restricted to their default behavior, because we've seen examples where we can change the default behavior and we can add stuff to it. So, for example, we added code in the uh, uninserted event. We created template columns to, to put dropdowns and, and validators and so on. All right? So never think that you're stuck with the default behavior. And always remember your wild card. All right? What's the wild card? You can code it yourself if you absolutely want to do something that's far different than the default behavior of a grid view and a detail view. You could write your own form and just skip those all together. But it's good to know both options because then you can make the call yourself in an informed way. So I'm going to download this and we're going to edit and delete on a grid view. Depending on the time, and if I'm not off or not, we'll look at the uh, details view as well. going to extend deadlines on a couple things, by the way, um, and I'll post, <laughs> I'll post uh, okay. those later today. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. It, instead of the one assignment I know is due today at 11.59, I think I'll extend it till tomorrow at 12.05 a.m. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, that was a joke. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, I'm offering an extended deadline. You think you would find my jokes hilarious at this point, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's just pick one of the grid views that we have been working on.
let's do let's do the order list. So I'm going to use this as my start page. All right. Now, let me open an instance of Notepad++ because I know that the SQL statements are a little hard to read. So, what do I have in this table? We'll do first, uh, actually we'll do the delete first and then we'll do the update. Alright? Because the delete's easy. Alright? How do you delete something? Delete from the name of the table. So in this case, the name of the table I believe is pizza order. Where pizza order ID equals question mark. Alright? That's it. Now, this will fail or it will succeed. Um, the, about the only thing that could make this fail, let me rephrase that. The most likely thing that would make this fa fail is if there was a foreign key relationship and we had a, a restriction on deletions. So if we tried to delete a pizza order, something from the pizza order table, and there was a related table that had the pizza ID, pizza order ID is a foreign key, and we said to restrict deletions, not cascade, because then it would, uh, it would prohibit deletion. We'll, we'll go and we'll do that. Um, at a certain point. I'll go in and I'll create a table related to that. But right now we're not going to worry about that. So really, right now at this point, the only thing that would keep it from deleting would be is if we made a syntax error or there was some goofy database error. Still, we want to track for that, remember, because we don't know. We don't know um, what weird situation we could encounter. The table could be exclusively opened or whatever. All right, But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. That's a delete statement. All right, so I'm going to go in into my SQL data source. Configure data source. I'm going to go into delete, and I'm going to paste that instruction in. Maybe. Delete from pizza order where pizza order ID equals question mark. That's all I need to do. I'm from the SQL side. And then I click finish. Now, I have to tell the detail view, I'm sorry, the grid view, that I'm able to delete. So I click Enable Deletion. And now there's a column to delete it. All right. Now there's really, well, I, I, I almost said something, but that is not true. So I, I won't even go ahead and say it. All right, let's run this and see what happens. So I go in here and run this. And next to each of these orders, there's a delete button. I click this to delete it, and it's gone. That was almost too easy, all right, to be able to delete something, all right? But yet that's the, what do I want to say, out of the box default functionality that just put the delete statement in, put the, uh, uh, put the code in, uh, uh, or, or enable the, the details view to allow deleting, and you're all set. You're ready to go. Well, what don't you like about that? I'll tell you what I don't like about that. 
That's it. There's no confirmation. All right. There's no confirmation that says, "Are you sure you want to delete?" Um. And and typically, you know, that that's kind of normal standard behavior, but it's not built into the grid. All right. Now, again, keep in mind that it does so much work for you. You shouldn't be bothered that it. Um, that there's a little piece of code you have to put on your own. All right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to customize this. This is a, a good job for a client-side message. So I'm going to pop up what's called in JavaScript a confirm box. A confirm box is like an elite. Uh, not not elite alert box, except it has a. Um, I was thinking an alert for a delete, and it came out elite. Uh, it, it's like an alert box, but instead of having you know okay, it has okay and cancel. So I'm going to go into this details view, and you can probably see it here. No, I can't. But I remember how to edit the code myself. So I'm going to go in here. Okay. And I, on the grid view, I'm going to say on, I lied. All right. This is default behavior that we're trying to change. We want to make it so something happens when you click on that, right? Not on the D, not on the grid view, all right? We want to change some behavior when we click on this. Well, what do you have to do if you want to change behavior? You probably have to make it a template column. I'm going to look. So I'm going to go to Edit Columns. And there's really nothing in there that seems interesting to me. So I'm going to make a template column out of this. Oops. So now it's a template column. I'm going to edit the template. And this will be the item template. I click on this guy. <clears throat> Why aren't my properties showing? Yeah. Well, again, I know how to code this. So I'm going to look here. Here's my template field. I'm going to say on client click. What do you suppose that means? When you click it, that's the on click part. But what do you think the client part means in that? What's it looking for here? It's looking for the user to do something. Well, yes. It's looking for the user to do something, and the user in this case, I guess I'm going to define as not just the human user, but the browser. It's looking for the browser to do something, the client side. So it's looking to run a snippet of JavaScript that the user can respond to. So I'm going to say on client click equals return confirm, and I have to Google this because I don't do this real often. I think it's confirmed with a lowercase c. Yep. I don't mind. Confirm. I have to include this text in single quotes, right? Because I have double quotes around the 
snippet of JavaScript. So, are you sure? All right. So, if you're not aware of JavaScript, this is a snippet of JavaScript. Um, a confirm is a dialog box that pops up and says, are you sure, and you click OK or cancel. What the return is used for is the return is used to inform the event which option you chose. So we don't, want, we don't just want to throw up on the screen the confirm box that says, do you want to delete? We actually want to do something with the response. All right? So what we're going to do to the response is we're going to tell that on click event which we chose. And if we chose cancel, it's going to cancel the action. So it's not going to go and do the delete. If we click OK, then we'll go ahead and do this. So let's go and run this and test this out. I click delete, I get a message, are you sure? I click cancel, and I'm okay. I click delete, and I say okay, and it deletes it. Okay? Yes? That also deletes it from your database, or just... Oh, yeah, absolutely deletes it from the database. So if we were to look, it's gone from the database. And if there were related... Uh, tables to it, it would, and it, depending on whether it was set to cascade or delete, if it was set to cascade, it would take out not just that row, but it would take out any related rows as well. So let's go and do that. Let's go and do that part. Let's go in and put in a related table. And at first, I'm going to put to delete, uh, to, to restrict deletion. All right, I'm going to create a related table to this, and I'm going to say restrict delete. All right, and we'll see what happens. Then I'll change it to be cascade delete. So let's go in our database. Here's my pizza order table. Has a pizza order ID, customer name, order type, type of order and so on. I'm going to add on to this a foreign key that says what specialty I, uh, pizzas we ordered. All right, so it will be like a pizza order line item. So if I ordered uh, a Hawaiian pizza, meat lovers pizza, California pizza, Polish pizza, and so on, um, then, then there'd be a row in this table for every pizza that was ordered on the, on the order. All right, and in fact, I'm going to actually add two tables. I'm going to add a, 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 a pizza order item that says what item we've ordered, and I'm going to order a size table. So I'll add those two tables. So the first thing we're going to do is going to order a, or create a pizza size table. And its primary key is going to be pizza size ID. And size description. I'm going to do a size diameter too. Because what I hate, this is my pet peeve. You can put this on the list, all right, of pet peeves if you're accumulating a list. I hate when you call a pizza place and you ask how big the large is, and they say it has 12 slices. What does that mean? 12 slices, how big? 12 slices, this big? Or 12 slices, this big? You know? That doesn't tell you anything. Tell me how big it is. If it is a round pizza, give me the diameter. <laughs> or the radius even. Or the circumference. Or the area. 
give me a numerical value that I can in my head imagine how big this pizza is. And and so on. I know that's I'm cranky, but you know, uh, yeah, I, I, it never never amazed me. Not to mention, yeah, you know, you could cut theoretically any size pizza into as many slices as you wanted, right? I could cut it into a hundred slices if I made each slice this thin, right? So, anyhow, so there you go. There you now you know you're one of my pet peeves, one of the things that you know uh, upsets me. And if any of you were, I could just see, now, where do you work? Best Buy. Okay, you work at Best Buy. You don't work at a pizza place. I could just see, you would be the guy that, after hearing this, would be, like, the next time I would call, say, and I ask how big it is, he'd be, it has 16 slices. And, oh, <laughs> oh, and by the way, Dobby is still dead. <laughs> like, yeah. All right, anyhow. So I'm going to create that a pizza size table, and I'm also going to create a pizza order item table. See, I don't forget things. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's totally not true. I, I, I don't remember a lot of stuff. Pizza order item ID, and it's going to have the pizza order ID, which is a number, specialty pizza ID, which is a number, and pizza size ID, which is a number. Do you remember that Dobby's dead when you're grading Matt's assignments? <laughs> I will now. <laughs> no, that would be extremely petty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. Yeah, we, we don't want to, we wouldn't want to do that. Leave me alone, Nina. Okay, so I'm going to go and create the relationships between those tables. So, show the tables. Uh, pizza size and pizza order item. Create a foreign key here. Create a foreign key here, and for now I'm going to I'm going to say no to cascade because I want to show what happens if I have a table that I restrict deletion for. So let's go and put a couple of things in here. So for size, I'll do small. Small would be what eight inches. Medium, 10, large, 12. All right. One of the rules I live by, by the way, is any pizza is a personal pizza if you try hard enough. <laughs> All right. So let's go into pizza order uh, item, and we'll say, let's look at an order. Let's look at order four. We'll say that for order four, I order a Hawaiian pizza, I think that is, and a medium. For pizza four, I order a um, whatever two is and a large. All right. So I'm going to just double check to be absolutely sure. This is set to not cascade. And the order I want to do something with is order number four. Okay. So I go and run this and start debugging. Go to delete this. 
Am I sure? Yes. Boom. The record cannot be deleted or changed because table pizza order item can, includes related records. So we get this ugly database there. All right? And right now we don't have any exception trapping for it. So of course the, the .NET framework is going to handle it. It's going to display the ugly exception. So what do we do? We write code. All right? Where do we put the code? Visual Studio. In Visual Studio. <laughs> that's a better, that's a more precise answer than to say on our computer. All right, so we'll give you credit for that. Where did we, have we run into this problem before? Have we gotten database, have we gotten ugly system database error messages before? Yes. Where did we put the code then? C sharp. In C sharp. All right. Isn't it in there? Exactly. Or right. Exactly. When we did inserted, inserting, or when we when we were doing ads, all right, we wrote code and we looked at there there being two different events on item inserting and on item, on item inserted, all right. And for the exception handling, we use the past tense one on item inserted because. The idea is, is we have to try the database operation. If it doesn't work, then we look at the error and report the error. All right? So that's what we're going to do now, except it's not item inserted. We're going to look to see if there's an item deleted. All right? Which there is. All right? And that's like the good thing about using the framework, is once you start getting used to these things, like the same thing that's in the details view is going to be in the grid view. Because, again, they come from a common ancestor. All right? Um, and just as there's item inserted event, there's going to be an item deleted event. Because it's going to handle it the same way. All right? So what I'm going to do... Uh, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. All right. I'm going to say on... Item Okay, they made a liar out of me. It's on row deleted. Okay, so big difference, but same idea. On row deleted equals and I'll create a new event. And that is essentially the same thing as on item deleted. So now we have our code here, and we can do essentially the same thing all right, that we did before. What did we do before? We went in and we added a label. want this label to look a certain way, how would we do it? CSS. We do it via CSS. You see, you could write you could write a you could write a, a little bot to answer a lot of the questions in my class. Alright? Um, if I say why do we do something, yell out the word maintainability. All right, okay. because that's the reason why we apply most of our best practices in software development. Why do we why do we separate the code into different files to make it easier to maintain? Instead of having a big jumble of code, we have things in little pieces that we can isolate and focus on one. Another part of it is how do we change the appearance of something? Well, if we're talking in the web world, it's with CSS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to put on that label a class, CSS class, where'd it go? Uh, CSS 
CSS class equals error. And just because I'm lazy today, I'm not going to create a separate CSS file. I'm just going to put the class right in my page itself. I'm going to make the text 50% bigger than normal. I'm going to make the color red. I'm going to make it bold. Now, not blood, but bold. Now again, some of this is like CISS 216 review, but notice I did not only make it red. All right. If I only made it red, then the air really wouldn't stand out for someone that was colorblind. So I did other things in addition to it being red. I made it bigger and I made it bold. All right. So you should be able to, uh, if, if you are not colorblind, you'll see it red, big and bold. If you are colorblind, you'll see it big and bold. Either way, you should get the message that something is simple, or something is, is important here. All right. So I'm going to go back to my code and I'm going to say if E exception not equal to null all right that's how you do it not equal the exclamation point null I am going to say label one dot text equals cannot delete possibly items related to this order. Now remember, this is catching any exception that occurs. So certainly the most likely problem that we're having here is that there's related records uh, in the other table because I know what the data how the database is designed and I know that if I can't delete something that's really the only um, legit reason unless there's like something unusual going on like the database being opened exclusively or someone moved the database file or whatever all right, so I can put that that's a, a possible reason. All right, but I don't want to say it's definitely that case because that would be misleading. All right, then I'm going to say that I handled the exception. So the framework doesn't worry about it anymore. And I think that's it. So let's go and run this. Oh, there's my label already. I should clear out that text, but delete. Are you sure? Yes. And there's my error message. Can I delete? I'm going to go and clear out that error, that label. So we don't see it unless there's actually a problem. All right. Questions about that? And and here's here's a spoiler alert. When we consider updates, we're going to have just about the exact same code in the row updated. All right. Because after the update, we want to check to see if there's any problems, and if there's any problems, we want to display in there. All right. Now, just for the heck of it, uh, I'm going to go and I'm going to I'm going to change it to cascade delete. So I'm going to go in the pizza database, and I'm going to look at the relationship, and I'm going 
going to say cascade delete. All right. So now when I go and run this, if I delete pizza order ID of four, it will delete all the pizza order line items associated with pizza order four. It will not touch the size though, because remember, it only goes from the one down to the many. The cascading chain doesn't go from many's to ones. All right, so it's not going to delete the order type because the pizza order is on the many side of that relationship. And it's not going to, but it will go and delete the, the pizza items. And if there's anything related to the pizza items, like a discount coupon or something, it would go and look at those as well. But it doesn't go up to the many. Uh, so in other words, if we look at the relationships, the cascade is relevant from if I delete this, will it delete that? It won't look at size because size it doesn't go from many's to ones. It doesn't consider those in the cascading process. And it won't go this way because it doesn't consider many's to ones. It only cons uh, concerns when the row being deleted is on the one side of a one to many relationship. All right. So now if I go in here and run this, are by sure? Yes and boom, it's gone. And if we go back into the database, not only is it gone here, but all the pizza order items are gone for it as well. I'm going to go into design view for the pizza order table. What does that do? That opens that database exclusively or opens that table exclusively because if you think about it if someone's messing with the design of that table it's pretty dangerous to try some database operation at that point so if someone is changing the design of the table that is going to be open exclusively so if I go and try that now and try to delete something Oh, I get that. All right. I'm going to actually, I'm actually going to go out of this and then go into it because so I can show the error. All right. So let's try this again. I retrieve the grid. Now I'm going to go into the pizza order table in the design view. And now I'm going to try to delete it. Am I sure? Yes. Hmm. I don't want to know why I, that didn't catch it. Interesting. The only thing I can think of is that there's things in the delete, um, there's things in the process of deleting that happen before the, uh, the row deleted, and we haven't gotten to the row deleted yet. So we get the error in another part of the process. I'll have to do some playing around with that to see exactly what we can do to catch those sorts of errors. All right, but at any rate, That's so much for deletion. So now everything is closed. I should be able to delete it. And there I go. So deleting is actually pretty easy, right? Which is irony, you know, ironic because it's the most dangerous thing to do, right? Because you can delete um, not just from one table, but from multiple tables if there's cascading deletes involved. One thing to remember about deletions is that it, it or, or any of these any of these SQL statements is this all or nothing. In other words, if I go to delete something um, and I can cascade from one table but not the other table, it's not like it's going to half 
delete some of the stuff and leave some of the stuff. Either it's going to leave everything. If the delete fails, it's going to leave everything. If the delete succeeds, it's going to delete everything. So if it can delete everything, it will. If it can't delete everything, it will delete nothing. All right. On to updates. We should be pros at this by now, right? What do we have to do? Well, somewhere on the board there is what we have to do, which is write the SQL statement to do the deletion, or sorry, to do the update. Then we have to configure the grid view to allow the update. And then we have to do what? Um, do any customization that we want. So let's go and say, oops, configure data source. I'm going to go to update. And what's my update statement look like? Uh, again, I'm going to go and um, Type it into Notepad++ to make it easier for me and easier for you to see. So, update, pizza order, set, Time of order. Customer name equals question mark. Comma. Order type ID. Question mark, comma, time of order, equals question mark. Is that it? need to know which row. And that will be with a WHERE clause. Remember, a WHERE clause always limits what rows are in play. All right. So we want to, in this case, we're editing a specific row. So you can write updates in other ways, but typically in the code that we write, it's going to be where the primary key equals some parameter. So where the primary key of this, so pizza order ID equals question mark. It's kind of funny, there's inconsistencies between how a SQL statement for an insert and an update works. All right? I don't know why that is. I mean, I kind of know why that is, but I, I guess I don't really know why that is. I mean, a lot of these things were sort of developed by committee, you know, and therefore things weren't done in a, in a consistent way. And it's one of those things that you just have to live with. There might be a really good reason, but I don't know what that reason is. All right. So anyhow, that is what an update statement is going to look like for this. Notice we're not updating the pizza order ID. Typically, with primary keys, you don't you don't want to update them, and um, that's a good reason for using uh, a surrogate key like an auto number because there's no real point in updating them. So let's go in. To the update statement, paste it in. Next, finish. I'm going to go here and I'm going to say enable editing. All right. And there we 
you go. We have the edit button. Um, it created its own column for editing. If I had not made the delete into a template column, it would have uh, added edit to that same column that the delete was in. Really doesn't really matter, um, but just as an FYI. Like if I knew, you know, if, if I created this all at once to do the query, to do the edit and the delete, and put everything in and set the grid view to allow edit and deletions, there'd only be one column here, one that said edit space delete. All right. So let's see if this works. I click edit. The things that are editable go into a text box. So notice pizza order ID doesn't go into a text box because that's not editable. This is a you know, identical default behavior as with a details view, right? Um, we haven't seen edit in a details view, but we've seen insert in a details view. And this is identical. So, let's say I change the name to Michael. I change the order name, type ID to 1. And I change the date the time to 11.24 and I click update and the changes have been made. All right. Now, problems with this, if I click edit, get rid of the name, do an update, boom, I get an error. All right. If I go and type something in the order type ID that doesn't exist, boom, I get an error. Or if I type garbage in here, what do you think is going to happen? We're about to find out. Well, we should know. Boom, you have an error. All right. So how do we fix that? Well, that's step three on our list, right? This is where we make template columns and we write code to gracefully handle those errors. All right. Let's, let's first write the code, then we'll go and make our template columns. So. On our grid view, we had a on row deleted. <clears throat> there also will be an on row updated, or I can put code. And my code is actually going to look almost exactly like this, right? Since I fixed the related rows, I'm going to get that. I'm just going to change the verbiage of this to cannot update, try again later. Remember, even if I write code to do validation, Even if I write code in there, I want to trap for other sorts of errors. So I'm going to leave this code in here. So now if I go and run this, and I get rid of that, click update, I get my user-friendly error message. All right, the rest of it is going to be the same as we did with the um, details view in add mode. I'm going to create uh, a template column for 
Customer name, I'm going to add a validator to it. I'm going to create a template column for order type ID. I'm going to create a drop down for it. And I'm going to add a validator for time of order. Maybe two validators. All right, so let's go and let's create template columns for these guys. Customer name, convert to template. Order type ID, convert to template. Time of order, convert to template. I'm going to go into edit template. And I will pick for the edit item template for customer name. I'm going to do what? I'm going to add a validator to it. Oops. Required field validator. It is, it's being a jerk today and not letting me see the properties here, but I can always go into code and put the properties. You what, can also Okay. View. Oh, maybe you have to click the properties box first. Because I've done that too. And then you go to view. And uh, property window. Uh huh. There we go. Thank you. Good tip. Require uh, re uh, error message, you know, must enter. Customer name and control to validate. Text box one. CSS class. Oh, what the heck? Let's make it air. Uh, yeah. All right. There we get the air. Um, I'm not going to do time of order because that would be the same, just different validators, right? I will do the drop down for the type of order. So I want to do the edit item for type of order. I don't want that to be a text box. So I'll delete that. I'll add a drop down here. And I will add, of course, I need a SQL data source associated with this. Configure data source. We should be pros at this by now. What do we want to see? We want to see I'll just keep that, select star from order type, order by, order type description, query works, finish, then I'm going to bind this, choose data source rather, SQL data source 2, what do I want to display, I want to display the order type description, what do I want the value, I want the value to be order type. Now again, this is one of the trickier things because there's, there's, there's binding a couple ways for this column. I have to say how the dropdown relates to that SQL data source. I also have to say how the dropdown, once I select the value, where that goes in my original data source. So choosing a data source says, well, what data source do I want to use to give the possible values in the dropdown? What do I want to display? What do I want to be the value? When I go in here and say edit data bindings, and field binding is, is uh, enabled, and I want to bind this to the order type ID. And it will be two-way binding. All right? Two-way binding means that it will take whatever value is there initially 
and use that to give the initial value in the dropdown. And after I've selected a value from the dropdown, it will put it back in. So input and output. It takes the initial value and chooses the initial value in the dropdown. It takes the final value and puts it back into that field. All right, so if I go and run this, edit, now I have a drop down there, and I can change it to delivery and update it, and it changed it to delivery. How could we make it? Right now it's showing that order for Michael, and the order type ID is 2. What is 2? I don't know. I guess it's delivery because that's what I picked. How can I make it show the name of that? First in general terms, what's my first step going to be to go and edit the template? That's already a template column. If it wasn't, I'd make it a template column. But since it already is, I'm going to edit the template. And there's probably a bunch of ways that you could do this. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to pick the item template for that. And I'm also going to make a drop down with its own SQL data source. And I'm going to configure this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next. Next. Okay, except for one thing. Here I am in read-only mode, and I have a drop-down that works. This is supposed to be read-only mode. So what I usually do is this. I will go and look at this drop-down. the rest of the columns. So it shows delivery in there, but it's not a real live drop down. That would just be misleading because this is supposed to be read-only mode. And if they could edit something in read-only mode, that's going to be misleading because we're not going to do an update unless they go into edit mode. All right? So that's updates and deletes on a grid view. How similar do you think it's going to be for a details view? Very, very similar. All right. Uh, we'll talk about details views next time. All right. And we'll write, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about details views next time. Questions? All right. Um, I am going to, I'll go unlock lab. I am going to... Um, then come back here, grab the files, and I'll be back in lab in a couple minutes.